Next up, we have Jeff Monday, VP of Sales, McQualcomm Technologies, and we're gonna talk about redefining compute experiences for enterprise and education. Jeff? Thank you. Uh, yes, as I was introduced, I'm Jeff Monday. I lead our enterprise and channel team here at Qualcomm. I'm gonna be spending a few minutes talking about some of the innovation that we're driving with the Snapdragon Compute Platform. And uh, I'd be remiss not to start this presentation around how the pandemic has really shaped how students, employees, and consumers uh, have changed their relationship with compute. Uh, over this last year, pandemic has been wildly devastating. But the silver lining has been that it's driven and really compressed uh, kind of the, the, the acceleration of technology cycles. We've not seen this any more than in the enterprise, where over the last year, We've actually seen, it's, it's been probably a slow move to the, the cloud over the last decade. That's now been compressed in the last year. We've seen IT and OT doing everything they can to move their productivity systems, their management systems into the cloud. And that presents an amazing opportunity for us here at Qualcomm because we believe that 5G is gonna help bring these experiences to life. This includes everything from being able to access your files in real time, to being able to collaborate via telepresence uh, that was recently announced with HoloLens, to, to realizing the dream of a cloud-connected compute environment. And we're seeing this shape the way that workers interact with each other. Both in the enterprise and at the municipality level, we're seeing everything from city planning to emergency services to urban development to field service workers in the way that they change and the use cases that are popping up for a hybrid compute environment. I'm actually seeing use cases that I never imagined were possible before. Uh, I was just talking to an SVP uh, of a major telecom last week, and uh, she was telling me that she's had to, to build a hybrid compute environment for her call center. Uh, when the pandemic struck, she was only able to return a third of her working population into the call center. The other two thirds had to operate from home. Uh, and she doesn't see that, that model shifting because morale's up and productivity has improved. Uh, you know, CIOs really don't have an option. This is not going to be a choice. They have to embrace this new hybrid working model uh, to retain and attract top talent. We're talking to CIOs around the globe right now that are scratching their heads in terms of what this new global compute environment is going to look like. And it hasn't been smooth uh, for everyone. We've seen that over 60% of workers still struggle with technology issues at home. They didn't sign up to be the IT department for their home office, but they've had to become one. We're also seeing that workers have about 20 or 25% of the working population still doesn't have access to reliable Wi-Fi. And this is where we really think our Snapdragon compute platform can make a significant difference. Like most technologies at Qualcomm, we've been working on this for a while. In 2017, we saw that the smartphone experience had pretty much eclipsed the PC experience almost in every single way. So we did a ground up rebuild of our world class smartphone chip and built it for the PC. This meant bringing the best of your smartphone and putting it inside your PC so that you could have an always on, always connected experience, thin light form factors, multi day battery life, and the ability to, to drive a, a new level of uh, security. We're really excited about the, the platforms that we're bringing to market. In fact, just this month, I won't, I won't uh, hold it up too long, but just this month, we worked with Samsung to introduce a 5G PC at 799, 799 US dollars, uh, that's available through AT&T and Verizon. Incredible platform. It's now bringing 5G within the realm of Wi-Fi and really changing the compute story. As we're talking to enterprises, they love the ARM computing platform for a number of reasons. One, it drives a new modern computing experience for their end users. But two, we're having really great conversations around sustainability. Because the ARM architecture actually uses less power per watt on a performance basis, think about now uh, swapping out all of the devices across your entire fleet of employees. When you take an enterprise like Qualcomm, we're starting to see that we're saving hundreds of metric tons of carbon waste every single year from just the energy consumption savings that we're driving with these laptops. And that's just the beginning. We're also working uh, aggressively, and you heard from Cristiano uh, that we love to make ecosystems. So we've been working aggressively with our ISV ecosystems to get the software ported to the ARM, Windows on ARM and Chrome on ARM computing experiences. 
We now have over 100 ISVs that are running natively on our platform. And we're working, and, and this is actually something I'm really proud of, we're working with a number of these ISVs to take the SOC innovation that Qualcomm is driving on the compute side uh, and drive some differentiated software experiences. Uh, just earlier this year, we, we uh, worked with Sophos and we announced a new form of enterprise grade security. This is called cellular connected security. So as cybersecurity platforms have moved their platforms to the cloud, the biggest vulnerability remains the connection back to that end device. And so we worked with Sophos, um, leveraging both our 5G and AI technologies. And now, when you're running Sophos on an ARM platform, it runs seven times faster than its x86 counterpart, because it's using our AI accelerators to take a look at the files that can be processed in the cloud, deciding what can be processed on device, and then also looking at what it's already processed recently so it doesn't have to process it again. We're also leveraging 5G technologies and geofencing so that when that employee leaves their home and goes to the coffee shop, we shut off Wi-Fi and they can only connect over cellular. Uh, we're also in the background working with them so they can take advantage of our always on, always connected state to update the software whether you've got your computer open or whether it's closed, because our computers don't go to sleep, they're always in standby mode, and so we're able to update them in real time. Now imagine your entire fleet of devices always being up to date in real time via a cloud computing platform. That's the dream that we're bringing with Sophos. On the consumer side, Zoom loves our platform. Uh, when you take an x86 platform and you unplug it, the power performance drops pretty precipitously. With an ARM platform, that performance remains the same. So whether you're plugged in or on the go, you're getting that same compute platform. For Zoom, that means you can be connected to your colleagues, your employees, your friends, uh, via Zoom for multiple days at a time on a single charge. And that means being connected anywhere you are. And so we're working with Zoom and we've got some really interesting platforms uh, or, or innovations coming on the Zoom platform with our ARM computing system. So, how does that translate to end customers? Uh, we've run a number of commercial pilots. My team's been hard at work working with CIOs, chief security officers, chief revenue officers. And what we're finding is when end users get our devices in their hands, they love them. Uh, you've got multiple days of battery life. You've got always on connectivity. And the sentiment from these customers is fantastic. We find that when we pull our customers after an enterprise pilot, nine out of 10 of them prefer them three times more than their x86 laptop. That's because that device is always on, always ready to go, and performs much like their smartphone. What that means and what that translates to in terms of employee experience, saves about two hours per employee per day. Uh, and that is a pretty significant savings when you add that over the, the course of a, an entire enterprise. So we're, we're making some pretty significant uh, advancements here. We're really excited about enterprise, but all everything that we have done in the enterprise space also translates to education. So I want to spend a few minutes talking about education. Um, when the pandemic hit, you know, it was, it was devastating. You heard it from the uh, mayoral panel. Those students that were connected didn't lose a year. The students that were not connected lost a whole year of learning. Uh, at Qualcomm, we see connectivity as a fundamental right, almost a moral responsibility to help drive that connectivity for students and teachers. We have a legacy of helping connect the unconnected. Many of you may not know this, but we've got a program called Wireless Reach that we've been working on for the last 15 years. This is a program that goes out into unconnected communities, looks at the technology that Qualcomm's bringing to market, and helps drive that into classrooms that need connectivity. This has helped changing the game with students and teachers. And uh, over the last 15 years, we've touched over 600,000 students and teachers in 10 countries. Uh, we've implemented 45 programs. And we're really excited that this last year that we were able to fold in our Snapdragon Compute platform. That same platform that's driving all that innovation in the enterprise addresses really key challenges in education. We found that in education, um, when the pandemic hit, a lot of the, the purchasing behavior was kind of a knee-jerk reaction. Most schools bought anything that they could. That meant cheap, uh, x86 laptops and MiFi hotspots. We're now at a place that I, I kind of call or refer to as the, uh, the hotspot backlash because when you give a student a MiFi hotspot and a computer, they now have two devices to manage, two power connectors, the password in between, 
and IT departments are hating this. Uh, we're actually talking to a number of IT departments about looking at how we can deploy cellular connected embedded connectivity laptops out to their student population. So they've got a single device that is always connected and they're not having to manage two devices. Also, because our devices have all day battery life, many of those students now that are returning to the classroom are finding that those cheap laptops can't make it through the entire day. And so I've seen pictures of, of classrooms where the students around the outside fighting over the power adapters to plug their computers in just so they can make it through a single day. We've been hard at work with our ecosystem with partners like HP, Lenovo, Acer, uh, and Microsoft. And just this year, we were able to bring to market the Acer 511, which is a connected Chromebook uh, that costs less than $400. We really worked back with Acer to hit that sub $400 price point, and it hit it, it hit it just the right time because the emergency connectivity fund that was authorized by the US government now funds laptops up to $400. So we're able to drive connectivity. That $400 price point is also meaningful because the other thing that we found is that when you've got a population of connected and unconnected students, we wanted to make sure that we were arming them with the same technology uh, and that we could optionally turn on that cellular, connected, uh, cellular connectivity for the students that need it. This helps remove any stigma from the classroom so you don't have connected students getting at one machine and unconnected students getting another. And that's really important when you think about the, the, the social, um, social elements within the classroom. Beyond compute and smartphones, we're also thinking deeply about this education space. We're partnering with OneScreen, um, we're partnering with eGlass, we're partnering with uh, Hovercam to completely transform the education classroom environment. It starts with smartphones and compute technology, but it extends to whiteboard and smart speaker appliances as well. Uh, it, there's, there's many different ways that Qualcomm technology can help transform that classroom, and we believe the confluence of these technologies coming together is gonna have a radical shift in how teachers teach and students learn. Beyond kind of the, the, the core classroom, we're also working actively with our XR team. And this is where we kind of see the, the future of computing going into spatial computing to help train teachers and also train higher education students. We've recently deployed a number of XR environments across higher education campuses that are changing the way that doctors learn. Cadavers are incredibly expensive. And when you can uh, perform surgery in a virtual environment over and over again, it gives you more reps and it reduces the cost. It also helps increase um, uh, efficiency and, and knowledge transfer. So we're really excited about this space. We think XR is the, uh, the future of computing, and we're gonna continue to innovate and help drive this into the classroom. Between what we're doing with Snapdragon Compute and XR, we think we're radically changing not only the enterprise space, the city and municipality space, but also the classroom. And we're excited to partner with all of you to help drive these innovations into these spaces and transform what computing looks like for tomorrow. So I know I'm a bit early. Uh, hopefully we can use the, uh, the rest of the time for Q&A. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Monday. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up for Q&A. If you have a question, please raise your hand and I'll bring the mic to you. So any initial questions? All right. Okay. I guess if we have any questions, well, thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Monday, VP Thanks, of Sales with Qualcomm Technologies.